All right, so it's been a couple days since I've been able to get out here and work on this, but um, the last clip, I uh, told y'all that the next chance we got would be getting this put on, but I'm sure you all can kind of see it here. Let me, this receiver is, it's a three inch, and this is a two inch wide tube or tongue on this trailer but it's a three inch receiver so we need to build up a half inch on each side yeah we could just buy a new one but the whole point is to make what you have work and from previous videos you all know that i have quite a bit of scrap metal around i just keep the stuff because odds are you're going to need it eventually especially if you do any type of things like i do in the end you always end up using it so i just try to hold on to as much as i can so I have this three inch angle iron right there and we're gonna cut two pieces of that along with a couple pieces of, I believe it's two inch flat stock. We're gonna take the two inch flat stock, put it on, weld it to the sides of this tube, roughly right in the middle. Then we're gonna take the three inch angle and wrap it around and weld that solid. And when we do, that should take out all the slack or at least the majority of it to where we can just weld it on and we're done so i'm going to get everything set up i'm going to start cutting these pieces to length and then we'll start sizing everything up and seeing how it's going to work all right so what i have here instead of the flat stock i have some old mower blades um i don't know i can't tell you how old they are where they came from a lot of the people that know me know i collect this stuff so the people that live around me just kind of drop things off. They just throw it out into my scrap bin, which I, I can show you all that. Where I'm at now, I actually have a truck sitting outside, and that's what I tell people to throw any type of scrap metal they want to get rid of in. So I went out there and I found these. So these are the same width. Well, once I weld it, it'll be the exact same width as the tubing. So instead of using flat stock, we're going to use these, but I need to cut these down to size. So obviously the little flares here, we got to get rid of that. So I'm going to bust out the tape measure. We're going to make a couple measurements. We're going to clean this up with the wire wheel on the grinder to get it just to clean metal so I can actually make my measurement marks and I can see them. And, and then we'll get to cutting it. We'll take it over to the grinder or the bench grinder. We'll clean up the edges here to get a good penetrating weld. And then we'll get to welding it on. All right. So like I said, first things first, we're going to clean these up with a wire wheel real quick. <clears throat> so that way we can see our marks and it'll just help clean the metal up for when we get ready to weld. <laughs> Watch out. And my wire wheel just flew off, so something I'm gonna mention is with these bigger wire wheels, a lot of times I put these on by hand. That's really why it just flew off, because I didn't tighten it down. I just kinda, you know what I mean, called it good. And when you release the trigger on these battery powered grinders, they stop immediately. So when they stop that fast, it causes these to come undone. So just something to think about. If you ever get get you a set of these battery grinders, make sure you actually tighten everything down good. That time it stopped a lot slower because I kept the trigger compressed to keep the brake off. Alright, so now that we got that done, we're going to get our tape measure. Measure both of these to length. 
And then while we have the uh, cutting wheel going, we're gonna go ahead and cut our three by three angle iron as well. So that way we have all our materials prepped and ready. And then, well, I take that back. We're gonna cut these, we're gonna get them on there, and we're gonna see how much, because these are pretty thick. Uh, you know, they're decent, it's a decent size. By the way, these lawnmower blades are great if you're gonna try to make your own knives. And we got a new puppy. I'm sure you all can hear it in the background, but it's not happy about being in the garage. But, yep, yeah, we're gonna go ahead, like I said, measure these, get them cut to size. We're probably gonna clamp them onto the tongue of the trailer so I can get a measurement as far as how much more or how much further we need to go to get that receiver to fit properly. And once we do that, we'll pretty much go from there, see what we need to do next. So hang with me. All right, so I put the receiver on the trailer, marked uh, the length on how far back the uh, tongue of the trailer, the head tube, whatever you want to call it. That is five and three quarter inches. That is how much of the... I guess that's how much of the neck of the trailer that receiver covers. So, five and three quarters, so we're going to cut these out to eight inches because I want overlap because we're going to be welding the receiver onto it. And we don't want to put a giant seam right there in one spot with the welder because that is, <clears throat> in my opinion, I just feel like that's going to cause a weak point. So we want to try to spread the load down the neck of the trailer as much as possible. So... With that being said, we come over here and we look. We can go as far as, uh, it looks like about nine and three quarter inches. Nine and a half inches. And that'll keep us in full width material. And this material is about two and a half inches wide. So, <clears throat> but on our trailer, if you remember, we have that handle. So with that handle being there, that allows us, we can go as far as eight inches. And obviously we've prepped the trailer back as far as eight inches exactly. So we can clean up a little more of the paint on the sides, but as far as up top goes, we can't really do nothing with that. So we're going to come back over here. And like you saw, that's eight inches. We can run down the side quite a bit more, so we very well may take all nine inches of this that we can. But something we need to do first is I'm gonna grab my speed square and we're gonna throw it on there and we're gonna get our straight lines made <clears throat> and then we're gonna measure the length to see how much usable material there is. All right, so we throw our square, or our straight edge on there. We're going right to where that material starts to turn. And that's where we're gonna make our, or draw our marks. So. So that's the amount of usable material, in my opinion, that there is. It's kind of hard for y'all to see those lines, but. So, now that that's done, Taking our measurement, we're putting our hook right in the center of that line. We actually have a little over nine inches, not nine and a half. It looks like it's like nine and an eighth inches. So with nine and an eighth, we can run these down both sides of that tube. We'll just have to clean up about two more inches. And that'll help spread the load of the receiver. But before we do that... We may actually leave this little flare on this end, but in order for us to be able to leave it, here, we're gonna have to cut it. So if we take our gauge and we line it up at that pre-existing angle and we cut that off, we can run that down the tube and when it gets a little past the handle, it'll taper off, which honestly, I don't think that'll look too bad, but we're gonna have to flat cut the other side because the receiver is gonna be there. So. I mean, to get as much usable material as possible, that's probably what is going to end up happening. But before we get to that point, I'm going to go ahead and cut one side off flat so we can put it up against the uh, tongue of the trailer. 
and just see how it looks make sure it's all going to work out properly and we're going to see how much more material we need in order to make up the rest of that gap for that receiver in order to fit on i did get online and look at uh two inch tubing receivers two inch trailer receivers i guess for and i mean it's another 60 bucks is what i'd have to do in order to buy another one when we've already spent the time fixing that one and then I have all this scrap material laying around to where we can go ahead and just make that fit on there. And I went to all my local supply stores, and if I ever mess that receiver up, my local stores only carry 3-inch trailer couplers. So therefore, if we just go ahead and do the work now, if anything ever happens in the future there'll be no issues getting it repaired or finding replacement parts so that's what we're gonna do so i'm gonna get ready i'm gonna go ahead and get this one marked up we're gonna get those ends cut off with the uh, cutting wheel and then i'll bring y'all back and we'll see how it fits on the uh, tongue of the trailer All right, as you can see, I got the one end of that cut off and I took one of these clamps and I clamped it together because lawnmower blades do have a slight bow in them, but it's not so much that you can't get it out by just clamping it down. All right, so now that we got that on each side, we got the plates on each side. We're gonna get this slid on and we're going to see how much more, if any more, from the looks of it, we're going to have to get on there. And from the looks of things, we actually have it. Try to gently slide it on so we don't get our plates all messed up. And you can see my line there. The line right here is my marker because before I put the plates on, like I told you, I made my measurement. And five and three quarter inches, or five and a half inches, I can't remember, I'm pretty sure it's five and three quarter, is how far back I want this receiver to be on the tongue of this trailer. So, what we're going to do now is we're just going to tap it back, get it to go back into place. Right there is where we're going to put it. Our, there's still space for our latching mechanism to move freely. There's probably a half inch. It's about the width of my finger between the moving components or this cross pin that holds everything and the end of the trailer. So now that we have that figured out, we see that all this is covered. What I'm going to do is I uh, mentioned I'm going to cut those at an angle. So we're going to cut these off going straight up at an angle like that on both plates or both blades. And once we get that done, we are then going to get these slid up to the top to make the top where we're going to weld we're going to slide this up to the top edge of this trailer so when we put our weld on we can grind it down and it'll look like it's one solid tube even though we've added those plates on and we are going to weld these plates onto this head neck or head tube whatever you want to call it and we're going to weld it all the way around onto this tube and after we do that we will then knock this on we're going to put a weld across each side the top and then we're going to put our plug welds in and once we get all of those things done, the receiver will then be permanently attached to the trailer. And we will have made it to where any 3-inch receiver can fit onto this. Because rather than being 2 inches, it will now be 3. Which, this receiver is bent as well. It's bent in. As you all seen when I unbolted it, I did heat it and beat it. And we got it back relatively flush and straight. So, I can still see that there's a gap here where this is bent, but it's still squeezing onto these plates fairly tight. 
Even though there is that gap, I'm still going to weld this receiver on. And the main reason for that is I will never get this perfectly straight no matter what I do. I will never get it perfect. And if I ever have to replace it, even though it's going to be plug welded around here, we can take a grinder with an actual grinding wheel and we can just eat away at the material at the plug welds and get this whole receiver off. And honestly, if the time ever comes where we actually do need to do that, we may even possibly just cut the whole front half of this trailer off and put a three inch piece of tubing over top and just weld it on as a sleeve and that'll be that. But for now, this is a good receiver. We've got it all cleaned up, got it fixed up, got it beat back into shape. Like I said, I'm rambling on, but we're gonna make our cuts here at an angle because I just like that better. It'll blend these flat pieces, this flat stock or mower blade. It'll help blend it into the original head tube of the trailer. And overall, it'll just make it look way better. So with that being said, I'm gonna take this off, cut it, and we're gonna get ready to weld. All right, I thought I'd show you all this before I cut it. That is the line I'm going to be following, as you can see. The thing is, right in the center of that line, let's try to get it to focus on it. You can see where it's got that hump. But what I'm hoping is, I'll be able to cut it right through there. Then once we get it cut, I'm hoping that that hump, well, what? I guess I'm just hoping that the hump looks worse than it really is going to be because I got that line right on the back edge of it. And if it is still an issue, once we get it cut, I'll take the torch and we will heat it and beat it till it's flat or... I'll weld a bead across here, and right as we get to where the hump is, I'll stop while the material is still very hot, and I'll just hit it a couple times, knock it flat, continue the weld. But at the same time, it's not really going to affect anything, so I'm sure you can hear her. I think she's lost. But at the same time, that hump isn't going to affect anything. It's just going to be, I guess, like a blister or a pimple visually. And I'll know it's and I'll know it's there, but other than that, it is superficial and has nothing to do with, I guess, the structural integrity of what we're doing. It's just something that I know will be there, and it will bother me until I address it. So, if it is an issue, I'll bring y'all back to show you how we're going to fix it. If not, y'all see it when we're ready to weld. All right, something I thought I'd show you real quick. I went ahead and prepped every hole on this because like i said this is galvanized so i went ahead and scraped it all down i got the rim here all the way around and on the back side i didn't get down in them holes but there's no good way for me to do that so we're just going to go for it and i'm just going to turn the welder up pot and we're going to hope it burns through but other than that i'm still got to cut these so i'm going to do that now and I'm going to put you on time lapse until we're ready to start welding it on to the uh, tongue of the trailer. All right, so as you can see, I got the metal prepped. I've got it sitting there on the side. Um, what I'm trying to do now is to get it lined up because I'm wanting to cap this tube off before we weld the receiver on because it's just wide open and we both know it's behind a truck. If we ever get caught in the rain, this entire framework is going to get full of water. So we're going to cap it off to try and prevent that. But before we do, I want to put on the sides. So with putting on the sides, what I'm trying to do is get the plates perfectly even with 
the bottom of this tube here. So I'm just putting my straight edge there. My clamps are tight, but not too tight. And now what I'm gonna do is just tap it and just inch it back until it's resting on my speed square. All right, we got that one. Looks like just a little bit more, and this one's up. And there it is. Well, this one's actually up just a hair too far. Alright, that's pretty good if you ask me. Now what we're going to do is bring them up flush with the top. And then we'll double check that our front side's still flush and even. And I don't know if y'all can hear that, but that wind is going nuts out there. All right, well, this other side came up. I guess where we're Jimmy and the clamp. looks fairly flush right there it's giving us a lip I'm giving myself just a little room to be able to stack the weld on top so that way we don't have to grind the weld all the way down to uh, our flat stock we can leave a little bit of a rounded edge here once we grind our weld off to make sure we can get a good flush fit with our uh, receiver or coupler. There we go. Alright, so that's right about where I want it. It's fairly even all the way back. Alright, we're going to retract check our front side because where we are capping this off, I do want it all to be fairly flush up front. Uh, what I'm going to cap that off with is a small piece of 14 gauge steel. Uh, we may even recycle a part of the blades, a part of the mower blades right here that we cut off the front. Just stick that up there and cap it. Because with, honestly, once the receiver's on, no one's ever going to see that area. So, realistically, it doesn't matter too much what we use to do it as long as we do it. All right, remember how I said these blades had a bow? Right here, there's a pretty large gap. Let me get you all there. As you can see, and the other side has one as well. So we're going to go ahead and throw uh, another clamp on here. And we're going to squeeze that back side together. And then I'm going to run along and put tack welds all along the top surface. Then we're gonna adjust the clamps to squeeze onto the bottom half of the blades. So that way we can put tacks all along the bottom. And that should be all that we need to do in order to get these blades, to get the bow out of these blades. Because I'm pretty, to the best of my knowledge, these are high carbon steel. High carbon steel, I should probably be using a stick welder to get my amperage up a little higher. But all I have here now is my flux wire. So what we're going to do is just crank the juice, give it a slow feed rate to make sure that we get good heat and penetration without burning through the neck, our tongue here. And we're just going to let it have it, and hopefully that's all it takes. And that's all we need. I know that flux wire is more than enough to weld the coupler on because that is thin material for the most part but the only area I am kind of concerned is these here but I know this tubing is that's probably 14 gauge max well I'll take that back it's probably 16 it's probably 16th of an inch I don't know what the gauge is on that but I know this is just a little bit thicker than that so Yep, I'm going to get the welder set up, and then I'll bring y'all back to watch the show. Also, flux core, or uh, 
yeah flux core welding it's very smoky so i do like wearing these little masks just help get some of that smoke out i do have a uh, actual chemical respirator as well i'm a bigger fan of that if i'm welding anything painted or galvanized and anytime i paint inside this shed i try to wear it or shed garage anytime i paint in here i try to wear it or have a fan on so like I said earlier, you have one set of lungs, we got to take care of them, right? And also, I may just put this in a time lapse because this is going to take me a good while to weld all the way around both of these plates here. So I'm probably going to put you all in time lapse and I'll just get to it. And when we get done with these plates, I'll slow it down and talk to y'all while i'm getting that receiver on then once the receiver's on something i forgot about we got to get that safety chain put back on All right, so I figured out. Yeah, right in there, it kind of got a little wild, but that's, I ran out of welding wire and I had to change wire and I put the speed back in the wrong place, but overall, not too bad. But remember, flux wires, you can see where I was welding sections at a time. But flux wires, a lot of splatter, man. So you always got to hit it with a grinder or a flap disc, get rid of that stuff. But remember, flux wire welders, they are not supposed to be stacks of weld. They're supposed to lay in there, man. If you have a stack with a flux wire welder, odds are you've got your wire speed way too high and you're not even penetrating. All right, back to the time lapse. All right, so I decided instead of trying to weld the underside on this thing, I'm probably going to do some plug welds in these holes. And since we have the whole top welded and the bottom, and then once we weld the front face, that should be more than enough. We might get under here and put like a little stitch welder or a small bead right here in the middle just to keep it, if it ever gets under load, keep it from like peeling out. But other than that, I don't think we need much more. But yeah, these welds are a little rough, but I was trying to pull the weld instead of push it. And I don't know, those of you that know what I'm talking about will get what I'm saying. It's, I'm self-taught as far as welding goes. So um, it's still a learning curve. I'm not, a professional by any means so yeah that's something I'm not the best at yet but I figured I'd give it a shot so I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up and probably get ready to do like a small stitch here on the bottom which by stitch weld what I'm saying is probably gonna come off the corner about an inch to two inches stop jump to the middle do another inch or two inches then go to the very end do about an inch or two inches and then we'll weld up the face, cap it, and then we're ready to put on the receiver. All right. So I decided we were going to use this. I found this over there. Well, obviously, we just cut it off of these that we just welded on. But this actually fits in there perfectly. It's going to sit inside the tube kind of like that. So it's got that arch in it. So 
with that being said, it's gonna sit roughly like that. You can kind of see how it has some overlap, which that's perfect because then I can fill it with weld while the weld's penetrating. It's gonna hit the piece of flat stock that we put on there, the inside wall of this tube, and then hit the cap. And then where it's bowed, it is still gonna give the latch mechanism on our coupler more than enough room to still function properly and we're going to be able to get it capped off all while still placing it where my initial measurement went so with that being said we're going to get at it and i'm going to set y'all back up in the time lapse we're going to get this piece placed where i want it get it cut to size and then we're going to get it in there and get to work all right got the cap sitting in there what we are going to do now is Get it welded solid. Whoop! I knocked it out. All right. So I'm gonna put y'all back in the time lapse. We're gonna get this cap welded. Um, then I'm probably gonna go ahead and get the stitch weld on the bottom of these two plates. Just to go ahead and get the rest of the welding knocked out of the way, so that way we can start cleaning it up and get the receiver put on. All right, so I got all this welding done, at least on this area. Um, got it capped off. I ground down the welds a little bit just to pretty it up so this would sit a little better. So as you can see, that now goes on. It's just a little ahead of where the line used to be, so that's good. So next step, we're gonna get this welded on. Do, And what we're gonna do, we're gonna go around the uh, seam here probably do a stitch on the bottom on the front half and do a plug weld on the top two holes and then plug weld the side front two holes and other than that we're going to call it good so that'll probably happen tomorrow but for today we're going to call it good enough and we'll be back tomorrow to finish it up all right so next thing we're going to do is we've got this all ground clean we got the uh, galvanized coating, which I believe it is galvanized. If it isn't, then that's my mistake. But we've got it all cleaned up in the areas that we're going to be welding. The only area that we can't get to is on the interior, but I have a die grinder. So I'm probably going to put the, uh, I have metal prepping pads is what they're called. Um, I'll probably put one of the rough pads on my die grinder and reach in there and try to get on the interior because I don't want that rust to cause any issues with the uh, weld penetrating considering this is obviously an important area and the last thing we want is for a weld to fail here. So we'll probably do that to prep the interior. Then once we get the receiver welded on, which I'm probably going to time lapse it because like I said, I'm going to weld across the the three sides on the back, I'm going to do a stitch on the front edge on each side on the bottom, which what I mean is right on this edge, we're probably going to run a small weld right to the front edge. And you can see how I've got the receiver stuck in that far. Most people do it about right there. But for me, I want all the clearance I can get. That still allows more than enough room for this piece here to function properly. As you can see, 
So that's where we're going to put it. I'm going to put two small welds right on this front edge on each side. Then we're going to come over here. We're going to go all the way around that area. Then we're going to do a spot weld here. We're going to do a spot weld here and on each side. And that should be more than enough to hold it on. Like more than enough. That's probably overkill. But the way I am, I'm probably going to end up plug welding each hole, every hole that's on the receiver, just because aesthetically I think it looks better. Just plug the holes, weld them completely full, and then uh, we'll just paint it. But other than that, we're making pretty good headway on this thing. Then after we get that on, we got to get the safety chain welded on, but I need to put on the receiver first so I can measure the length of the safety chain to make sure I get enough on each side. Then, <clears throat> then the next thing we're probably going to do is fix this jack where it's blown out on the bottom, which that'll just be heating it up, beating it back together, and putting a small weld there to keep it from splitting again. Then that'll be done, <clears throat> and our last step as far as getting it ready for what I need need it for here the most recent will be uh running the new wiring down the length of the frame and getting our new lights put on the back and i have a couple marker lights i bought uh the kit i bought came with two marker lights i went and bought two more because i'd like to put marker lights on each on the front and back of each fender at least for while they're here then once i get rid of the fenders i'll probably set the marker lights up on the side of the deck because once I widen the deck, obviously, I may just overdo the fenders with the deck because that'll keep the deck from rotting out from the tires throwing water and other stuff up on it. But if I do that, I'm going to have to reshape them for sure and probably add in a, some more fender bracing just to help support it to keep them getting damaged again. But other than that, like I said, I'm going to set you all back up on the time lapse. Um, I'm going to get to welding on this receiver. And then when we're done with that, I'm probably going to start cleaning it up with the grinder. Then I'll bring you all back and we'll start measuring out the length for a safety chain. From what I read online, you need to allow yourself, a, like, I don't know, from what people are saying, I read a maximum of 18 inches. And then I read a minimum of 10 to 12. Don't quote me on that. I'm going to have to reread the article. But uh, the ideal placement is one foot from the tip of the receiver on your trailer they're saying give yourself 12 inches from there and that's obviously where the 18 inches comes in because up to 18 inches at 12 point at a 12 inch mounting place for your safety chain so 18 inches will compensate for turning radius you're going to need extra train for chain for the turns but you don't want so much chain that it's going to allow the tongue of the trailer to dig into the ground if it comes unhooked so we're going to give ourselves just enough to keep it off the ground and enough for us to be able to practically turn it to a jackknife. We want the chain to stop us prior to a jackknife because if the safety chain catches at that point, which I don't even know if that's possible, but we're going to try it. If the chain catches, that's something you will feel in the truck. The chain will become taut and it'll say, hey man, you're trying to turn too sharp, stop. So we're going to do that. So, like I said... I know I'm saying it again, but we're going to put you back up on the time lapse. We're going to weld it solid, clean it up, and then we'll bring you back to start figuring out the safety chain stuff.